Okay, we're on to our next form. This one you probably won't use a lot. Um, you can use this when you call the parent and stuff and just get a little bit more information and stuff. The big, I would recommend that once you get the um, fact, it did have insurance number on the referral form, didn't it? So yes, it does have insurance type and policy. So hopefully they'll have like Medicaid and the Medicaid number written right there. But if not, um, Usually when you reach out to the parent the first time to schedule and stuff, you can use this. You wouldn't have to fill out all of this. You might just in case they have something other than Medicaid and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that's pretty important to get is the um, email address for correspondence. That way if we ever want to send out information to them, like through DocuSign and stuff, then you'll have that email address right there. Since that other one was so short, uh, my wife and children would be so happy to know that I was succinct and short. <laughs> it's not one of my known traits, <laughs> being kind of terse or parsimonious. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to add it on to comprehensive diagnostic assessment. So the first time they come in generally, you have a couple of options of you're going to be dealing with kids. So there's three things that need to be completed and they, there's not a particular order of some of them. The first is there's a comprehensive diagnostic assessment that's required by Medicaid. These are Medicaid I'm talking right now. Insurance is different because you won't need the comprehensive diagnostic assessment. They'll just be an insurance information sheet. It's like a one page, a double sided. And then um, there's a treatment plan that's required with um, Medicaid that wouldn't be required if they're insurance only or cash pay. And then there is a treatment plan that is required by Medicaid that wouldn't be required if you're um, uh, insurance only. I'll do a little insurance only um, video at the end. So hold your horses and get excited for that one to come on. We'll add it to our channel of YouTube here. So. Um, uh, there, there are some requirements. The, um, before I have the first session of counseling, I have to have the comprehensive diagnostic assessment done, and I have to have the ICANS assessment done. Those, uh, the ICANS is brand new, just of, as a couple of months ago, required by uh, wonderful Medicaid. Um, there's more stuff we get to do rather than treat the client, which is okay. So um, uh, the treatment plan can be signed and done in the first session of counseling because it's kind of uh, a non-billable aspect. It's included essentially within the comprehensive diagnostic assessment code. Um, and so that's that $47 I get for the first one. If they, there are extenuating circumstances. Usually it's um, refugees, that there's language barriers or other things getting in. There is a possibility of doing what's called a double CDA where I have um, two of those billing code times, but that's kind of the exception. Um, it's not the exception in the community because in the community we uh, typically do it with refugees and it's usually adults because you have language barriers and other things to figure out. So there's time there. Okay, so let's go into the comprehensive diagnostic assessment. Um, there's a number of ways of doing this. Um, some I see print out the comprehensive assessment thing and when they meet with the person they just kind of talk about um, they start asking questions. There's two ways. I am given the $47 because it's more than an average session code because they realize it would take more than an average session to get this thing done. And there's stuff that you can do that's not really billable, like say I'm calling the parents or I'm talking to the teacher or stuff like that that I'm going to have to do to get this information it won't happen with the kid. So there are two types of codes. I, I briefly have explained some. 
but if you haven't, one is a service code and there's no time limit associated with that. And the other is a time code. 90% of what you do, I mean, essentially everything except for the comprehensive assessment is a timed code, where if I have a 30 minute session, I use a certain code for that and I get paid a certain amount. If I have a 45 minute session, there's a certain code for that and I get paid a certain amount. If a 60 minute, same thing. Or if I'm with the ICANs, I'm with the client every 15 minutes, I add another um, timed um, unit on that I get billed for. The comprehensive diagnostic assessment is a service code, so I just get the $47 and however I get it done, I get it done. Okay. And so uh, I've seen some that have, there is a requirement that I meet with, that was Jessica, <laughs> So excited to write this down, she was opening up her papers and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, um, there, um, there is a physical requirement that makes obvious sense that in order to complete a diagnostic assessment, I have to meet with the client face to face because I can't diagnose someone I've never met. And so um, if I'm dealing with a kid, some I've seen have come in for the first, the, ideally what would happen is I would be able to schedule a time with the kid and the parent for the first session and the parent would come in and I would talk with them about what's going on and what their hopes are for the kid and I would also be able to observe and deal with the kid there. And then I might even be able to talk with a teacher or Julie uh, Drews who is, we're talking Taft who referred and said, hey, why are you referring this kid? What are you hoping will happen? What are the general issues and stuff? And so I can gather the information in that way and then write it up and stuff like that. So this stuff makes kind of common sense, uh, Medicaid number, date of birth, and stuff like this. And you'll just click and there should be some of these drop-down menus. Ah, oh, there you are. You know, like the ones that have something in them and the others are just fill in menus and stuff um, and so the, this is pretty obvious I don't usually go in order I don't start saying hey you know tell me your previous diagnosis and stuff like that typically when a kid comes in I'm like well I'll explain the first session in a different video yeah, but um, when I get to this part Usually I'm kind of, hey, what, what's going on? What do you need help with? And they start rolling, and then I start slugging it in, the uh, information as they have. Like, for example, they go, oh, yeah, um, you know, he's been depressed and stuff like this. And I say, oh, well, you know, tell me, when I say depressed, is he on any medication and stuff? And they're like, yes, he is. And I'm like, well, who prescribes that? Um, you know, doctor so-and-so. Oh, you know, what medication is it? And I'm already getting into, those are questions on the CDA and in my head. I usually, I have a piece of paper and I log it in there. There have been times, some do say, hey, um, as part of their disclosure and consent, they say, they get to the fee section of how much um, they have to pay for counseling and stuff. And they go, wow, you have Medicaid, this is so exciting. How nice because the fees normally a hundred dollars a session but Medicaid is going to pay all the costs that's so exciting for you but in order for Medicaid to do that we Medicaid has some requirements mm -hmm. I'm gonna to have to complete the CDA's thing comprehensive assessment I'm gonna to have to complete you know a treatment plan and I'm gonna to have to complete an ICANS the good news is if we do those things then I'll be able to help your kid all he wants and I'll also um, you know, Medicaid will pay all the costs and stuff. And so that's usually part of my disclosure and consent when I get to that part. But then when I explain that, when I get to the um, actual comprehensive assessment part, you know, I say, oh, remember this first time, uh, you know, now at this point I talked, well, I usually say, you remember I talked about that Medicaid, we have to do the CDA, we're at that point, we're going to do that. So I'm going to kind of ask you some questions and stuff. I am trying to be attuned that some, you know, families may be in a huge crisis. Say, um, their brother died in a fire yesterday, and 
um, I'm not going to be able to do all this stuff in one thing and then I'm going to spread it out using a lot of the questions are the same for the CDA and the um, uh, what is that called the uh, ICANS and so sometimes I can revert into ICANS you know and sometimes I've just done hey the first thing we have to do is this ICANN stuff so I'm going to ask you questions I kind of like starting with the CDA because it's a little bit more less a little bit less intrusive and stuff and so um, I I flip into areas like that you know and then if they're talking about say the medications and stuff I say oh that reminds me another question is health is your kid generally healthy is he on any other medications and stuff is he seeing a red doctor regular and they go yeah, yeah, he's good. He doesn't have any um, medications. If they're adult, I usually use that point where I slip into, so, okay, you're healthy, no diabetes or anything like that, or anything like that. It's okay. Um, do you smoke? How many times a week do you smoke? How many times a week do you drink? Um, I don't say do you smoke. I say how many times a week do you smoke? How many times a week do you drink? Because that's more conducive for them, uh -huh. adults, to... Um, answer that question but the, you know do you use any illegal drugs you know the reason I do that is it's it feels like health because when mm -hmm. I go to my MD and like it's time for your yearly checkup they go okay are you okay do you have any pains or aches you know do you smoke do you drink and I was like no 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 and yeah stuff. and so it feels like medical versus I'm like I'm gonna get your drug history yeah, <laughs> yeah that makes sense and stuff yeah. like that so I have a certain way so um, anyway, there is those kind of things, medical and stuff. This is your big thing right here, presenting problem, including symptoms of each diagnosis. So there should be a flow to this. The flow should look like this. I should have a clear idea of kind of diagnosis as I'm working here. Like I've even seen some that put, you know, they, they put um, depression and they put, you know, Times of sadness, reports crying, suicidal ideation, hopelessness feelings, blah, 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 blah. PTSD, you know, was a refugee, you know, saw dad killed, has nightmares, you know, stuff like that. So I'm putting that in there. So the presenting problem and symptoms of diagnosis should correlate down to right here when I get the diagnosis I should be able to look and go ah depression and the symptoms and then I should be able to look here oh yeah depression and then I think there's a flow that flows right into the treatment plan mm -hmm. I should have then when I get to the treatment plan it has problem depression you know and then goals help with depression kind of stuff there's just like one flow through yeah. you know if I'm I shouldn't be like reading all this and then goals um, you know talk about you know social skills in school you know something and I'm like mm, okay that's good too but what about the other stuff you know uh, so uh, as I go through this you want to put something in every box okay. you know even if it's within normal limits you know like when I get down to here um, appropriately groomed, you know, within normal limits, no problems, you know, crazy little kid, that's why he's seen me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I put something in every little okay. box and check whatever. I don't leave blank because then health and wealth or Medicaid when they do the audit think you just didn't answer it mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, some questions, you don't have to put a lot in some of these. They're one or two lines, um, you know, uh, I don't know what to say more. Do you have questions? So is it possible to put like none identified or something? Yep. So, okay. Yeah, like you could put um, none identified there. Mm -hmm. I usually, when I'm spiritual issues, that's usually when I say, hey, do you have a church that you go to mm -hmm. or any community church you're connected to? And if they say no, I'm going to say any. Any other issues um, with religion or spirit? No, no, not, not identified. Okay. But 
but I like to because usually churches are resources Definitely, that help yeah. the client and they can um, get financial or yeah. social or other support. Yes. So having that identified is good. Here's where I put my diagnostic code and disorder. So like, um, you know, you could put F431 or whatever mm -hmm. and then major depressive single episode or something. And then these boxes should make sense. You're going to probably have that one checked with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, let's just go through here like I was. And intensity is probably one hour, one times a week, three times a week. And so then um, you could have family, and it's one hour, and then as needed, who knows when I'm going to actually see the family. Okay. <laughs> and I could have family without client, because maybe mom, I'm realizing, could definitely use some help with her parenting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I want that, and so it would be again as needed. And then um, generally I encourage you to, if a kid's a little severe, you're going to check um, he may need uh, the two is um, respite and um, uh, CBRS and this is not saying that they're going to get those services they mm -hmm. just have to have those services what this is is a recommendation mm -hmm. and the reason you want a recommendation is because if I don't put any recommendation there and then we're like, oh, this kid needs CBRS. Then they're like, mm, why wasn't that recommended in the initial assessment? Okay. So I tend to overfill these. Uh -huh. <coughs> and then if they never happen, they never happen. Now, does this initial assessment have to be completed with the parent? <coughs> no. Mm -hmm. This assessment, the CDA, the requirement is I have to meet face to face with the client. But but it's because from what I'm understanding the parents often not there yeah, yeah. the school the, a big part of the reason that the school you're getting some of these referrals is they sent the referral out to the yeah. parent again and again and the parent and then it went nowhere yeah and meanwhile little Timmy Jones is destroying his classroom every day and yeah. they're like hey we got to do something and so reducing that barrier to treatment because you know some parent may be in a job that they're just barely making minimum wage and they're trying to keep the roof over their head and they try not to get kicked out and they got so many things that they're single parent or whatever else that getting you know dropping an hour once a week of my day to pick my kid up and take them to counseling and stuff is just beyond my stuff yeah. so in those situations I have seen some do a couple of things the couple of things I've seen most effective is they're able to call and talk to the parent on the phone. They meet with the client mm -hmm. and they talk to the parent and they say, okay, well, now let me ask you these questions. Okay. And that actually almost goes faster where they can just say, okay, spiritual issues, you know, this issues. And for these little kids in elementary school, Jessica's in elementary school, but we're doing this for anyone. Um, they're probably, you know, I'm going to skip over because most kids yeah. in third grade hopefully don't have big issues with this stuff. Yeah. So I can, even if I do, is just go um, go through that. Um, and also they're asked questions about a lot of these things in the ICANs, and so I'll talk about that when I get to the ICANs. Um, uh, I think there was something else I was going to say, or you asked. Let's see. So after you talked with the parent, you can fill it out, and it's good. The only thing is, is if the kid is under 14, we're going to go to the treatment plan briefly here. So if you go to the treatment plan, this is the one that is signed by the client. And so if they're 14 or older, they can sign their own. And you can have the parent too. But um, most of the kids in your elementary schools are all going to need a parent signature on the treatment plan. And so that's one I can send out through DocuSign. Okay. And stuff. Or if the, I by chance get the parent. So if I call the parent, they can't ever come in. I do the treatment plan, I send it out, DocuSign, they sign it in the back, and I'm golden to go. Um, and I can still work that way. Um, if, I, um, if I can get the parent in there, it's always a hundred times better. Mm -hmm. And then they just sign it right there and stuff. Um, you'll notice as you go to the bottom of the treatment plan, there's just a 
clinician signature and my signature, so there's not a um, parent signature required for okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On the treatment plan? No, no, this is the CDA, sorry. The C actually. Okay. So the comprehensive diagnostic assessment, there isn't the treatment plan, there is a parent Got signature it. required. So that's, um, so that would be your um, comprehensive diagnostic assessment. So you'll notice though that I make the treatment recommendations and then I have to do the same thing right here. Family, family without client present, you know, whatever. And medical necessity, it's a brief symptoms and what may occur if treatment's not implemented. So client has symptoms of depression, needs counseling services, otherwise may decompensate and deteriorate in their functioning. Okay. And it's simple. I don't like to make a lot of wordiness okay. if I can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm back to my succinct nature here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that.